Hello, this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs, and today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a super duper simple messy bun hat and also how to make it into a ponytail hat. Now, I had no intentions of doing one in a chunky, but I got so many questions, how do I transform it into using chunky yarn, that I thought I'd just go ahead and have a, just a real quick video of how to do this, and it's really, really simple. Now, I did write a pattern, which I had no intentions of writing a pattern for either, but it's a free pattern on my blog. It's just called My Chunky messy bun and ponytail hat and I'll put that link in the comments like I always do so that you can have that. The pattern's written in two sizes and we're going to be making it across the band first and then it's just these are all single crochets uh, working in the back loops and we're going to do some rows of double crochet and then a couple de decrease rows depending on which hat that you're making. It's super simple. I'm going to be using a K hook today. And I'm going to be using a K hook because I want to stitch a little bit tighter with the chunky. But if you are already a tight crocheter, you may want to go up a hook size or two. And this blue hat, which I am just totally in love with, I made it out of this. And this is the Deborah Norville Serenity Chunky Weight Collection. And this is a chunky five. And you can see it doesn't even take the whole skein. It only takes about half a skein. So with one of these skein or skeins, you could make two hats. And that's the one that I made today. And then I just added a little fun button just to make it a little bit fun. You're gonna also need a nice big uh, eye in your needle so you can weave in your ends when you're done. And of course, a pair of scissors. Now for today's demonstration, I'm going to be using this yarn. And um, this is, I got this on sale at Walmart, or um, Hobby Lobby, I'm sorry. This is Yarn B's Whimsical Bulky, and this is also a number five. And now with the number five and the number six, you can do this pattern. And I'm gonna explain to you how to measure and how to make it fit your head, even though the pattern comes in two sizes. So I'm gonna show you how to, me how to uh, measure and make it so that it fits any head size, actually. So you're gonna need about two, two and a half ounces of any kind of chunky number five or number six and your K hook, a couple of fun buttons maybe. Go collect your stuff and we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to begin by stitching this band first. We'll be chaining seven and then we'll be stitching in the second chain from the hook and we'll have six single crochets and then we'll be stitching in the back loops only and I'll show that to you in just a second but I also wanted to talk to you about how to uh, adjust the pattern for any size so what you're going to do is go by your head measurement the youth measurement is about 18 inches the adult measurement is about 20 inches but you can do this as tiny as you want or as big as you want three of these rows equal about one inch and um, that's how you will size it. Now, everyone does stitch different, so I do recommend always measure as you go. And so um, you can add or subtract by adding three rows per inch or subtracting three, per, three rows per inch to make it fit your head. All right, let's set this one aside and let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to chain seven. Here's my slip knot. And we're going to chain seven. So there is my seven that I chained. We're going to be starting our single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So we're going to go in the second chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both of those loops. And that's one single crochet. And we'll do that in each chain across. And this will give us a total of six single crochets. Then we'll chain one. Chain one does not count as a stitch here. It's just a turning chain so we can turn our work and it lays nicely. Now we're going to be stitching in the back loops only. And the way to figure this out, you can see there is a sort of braid looking across the top. 
Your back loops are the loops that are facing away from you. Your front loops are the loops that are facing to you. So we're going to be stitching in the back loops only and we'll do this on all the rows for the hat band. So we'll go in just that back loop, we'll pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both and we'll do this all the way across for six stitches going only in those back loops. And what this does is this gives us a nice stretchy band. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six single crochets, chain one, and turn. And we will repeat this for as many rows as needed for our hat. Now, if you're stitching the youth size, you're going to need, whoops, my yarn got caught. You're going to need 44 rows. If you're stitching the adult size for the 20 inch, you're going to need about 54 rows. But remember, these are just estimated measurements and you're going to need to measure as you go or basically measure your item as you go, making sure, because everyone does stitch differently. Some people's gauge is tighter. Some people is looser. I tend to be a little bit of a loose hooker. Um, <laughs> so my stitches tend to be a little bigger. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to stitch, always working in those back loops for as many rows needed as you need for your hat band. Make sure you take your tape measure and you measure as you go, making sure it's the length that you need. And you can see here. Here's the one that we made, measures about 20 inches around. Actually, this one measures about 20 and a half. So you can see they're all going to be different and measuring is very, very important. So let's get our rows done for our hat band and then I'll show you how to connect them and continue working. So now I have stitched my band for as long as I want it and we need to join the two ends together. So we're going to place the two ends together and we're going to have six slip stitches because we have six stitches. So I just pull my loop through and then we're going to place going through both sides of the hat band, pull up a loop and just slip it through. And we're doing slip stitches and be careful not to pull too tight because if you do, you'll get a little bit of a pucker. So there we go, one, two. Whoops, see I grabbed some string that I didn't wanna get. Happens some, sometimes even with the thin yarn, so just be careful. Like I said, don't stitch too tightly or you'll end up with a little bit of pucker over there. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like I need one more. Get that right in that last loop. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now do not tie off your yarn at this point. This is our extra piece and I'm just going to put it underneath out of the way and we'll weave that in with the needle later. All right, so now we, we've done our six slip stitches here and we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Now this part can be just a little tricky but it's really really not hard. There's a string in there. Must have crocheted a string in there. <laughs> Extra little string on that yarn. All right now we're going to crochet across the top. We're going to be stitching double crochets and that's why I had you do chain three. And what we're going to do is you're going to have the same number of double crochets as you do rows. And so you're going to be double crocheting in each of the bump and also the stitch that's in between the bump because remember, that's a stitch on the other side. So if you did 44 rows, you're going to have 44 double crochets. If you did 54 rows, you're going to have 54 double crochets. If you did 10 rows, you're gonna have 10 double crochets. 
because you're going to put one double crochet in the top of each row. So here's my first row right here. So I put a double crochet in that. Then I'm going to put a double crochet in between. Then double crochet in the top of the next bump because you're putting, even though you don't have stitches to go in, you're putting it in the, the uh, end of the stitches for your hat. And it turns out really nice. Okay, let me turn this around. So we're doing our first row of double crochets and we're going to go in each end of the stitch. So we'd go in this bump and then we'd go, we'd go in, in between that bump, then this bump in between every single one because we want to have the same number of double crochets as we do rows. And you'll continue that all the way around and join to the top of your chain three. I have stitched one double crochet in each end of the rows all the way around. That string's in the way again. And now I'm going to join to the top of my chain three. And now comes a really easy part. Chain three. And this is how the hat looks. Now this makes a great headband. If you want just a headband, that'll work too. Now, here is the band on the blue one, and then we just did our first double crochet row. Now we're going to do one, two, three more, one double crochet in each double crochet rows. So you'll have a total of one, two, three, four, one double crochet in each double crochet rows around. Really simple. So we have one row of double crochet. We need to do three more. one double crochet in each double crochet around for three more rows for a total of four. Now this is the same technique for the band and for the rows if we're making the messy hair bun in chunky or the ponytail hat in chunky. Both hats are done exactly the same up to this point and with the four rows of double crochet. That's what makes this pattern so fun is that it's super duper simple and you get a great result. So whether you're doing the messy bun hat or the ponytail hat, you're doing the band the same and these four rows of double crochet exactly the same. So we completed our hat band and four rows of double crochet and at this point the hat measures about five inches and we're going to be adding another row for um, not increase decrease and so that's going to make the hat about six inches long like this one. Now if you want it to be longer than that you have, maybe you have a little bit longer head, you can add more rows of double crochet before you do the final decrease row. If you're doing a ponytail hat, I would suggest doing one more row of double crochet and then adding your decrease rows according to the pattern. But for right now, I'm going to show you how to add the decrease row for the messy bun hat, and then I'll show you how to finish up for the ponytail hat. So we're going to chain three for the last row. We're going to place one double crochet in the next double crochet because our chain three counts as one double crochet and that counts as a double crochet. And then we're going to do the next two stitches together. And the way you do that is you yarn over, go in the next stitch and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Then you'll go in the next stitch and pull up a loop and you'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through the first three loops, yarn over and go through the next three loops. And by doing that, we stitch two double crochets together or one decrease stitch. So we've got one double crochet, one double crochet, 
and then two together. And that's going to be the pattern we're going to do for this last row. So we're going to place one double crochet in the next two stitches. And then we're going to double crochet the next two together. One double crochet in the next two stitches. And double crochet the next two together. And we'll do this all the way around our hat and join to that first chain three. And you can already see the hat is beginning to come in because we need to have this decrease row in order to keep the hat on our head. If we don't have this decrease row, th th there's a possibility this hat will slip right down onto our neck. So, one double crochet, one double crochet, and then double crochet the next two together all the way around. I finished the decrease row, one double crochet in each stitch, and then two double crochets together, one double crochet, one double crochet, two, one, one, two, all the way around. And you can see how it pulls it in so that it gives it a little bit of shape in order for it not to come off your head. Now, normally I would cut this and tie this off, but I'm going to show you how to make the ponytail hat in just a second before I do that. But you would tie that off and weave in your ends and there's your hat. And then you can add a couple of fun buttons if you want to or not. It's totally up to you. And when I add a button, I just thread the same yarn that's on there and then I just come up through the bottom wherever I want it a couple of times long as the yarn will go through. There we go. <laughs> there. And sew those on. I try to keep them on the band. And remember to be careful not to uh, stitch your too tightly in there because you don't want that to lose its stretch. All right. So let's go ahead and pull that out. And I'm going to show you, now that we've come this far, how do we add the stretchy band to make it a ponytail hat? And really, this portion of the hat is exactly the same. What you're going to do next, now if you want the hat longer, again, you can do more of these double crochet rows that we did in here before we did the decrease row. But what you'll do for the next row after this one is you'll chain three, one, two, three, and then you'll add, <clears throat> excuse me, another decrease row the way we did this one. So our chain three counts as our first one. We go in our next one and do a double crochet. And then we do that decrease again, stitching two double crochets together, just like we did on the previous row. And you'll do this all the way around again, just like we did. One double crochet in the next two stitches. And then stitch the next two double crochets together. And now remember, if you feel like the hat is too short for the ponytail hat, or even for the messy bun hat, add more rows of double crochet because from here to here measures six inches. So it depends on how big you're making your hat and who, who you're making your hat for as to how deep you want your hat. Remember, each row here measures approximately about an inch. And I say about because it depends on how you stitch. So let's continue our double crochet decrease row, one double crochet in each of the next two stitches, and then we stitch our next two together. And after we finish this row, I'm going to show you how to add the stretchy band. So I stitched my second row of decreases, one double crochet, one double crochet, then stitching two together. And now we're going to just stitch one row of double crochet. And this kind of just gives us a base, sort of a, to a flatten out a little, just so we can get our band in. So we're going to stitch one double crochet in each double crochet around our hat.
And um, just so that you know, the ponytail hats I wear because I like to take them with me because I swim at the gym and my hair's wet sometimes when I leave. But I and so I draw, I try to blow dry it, but I really love using the ponytail hat to put my hair up in a ponytail and let it go out that hole at the top of the head, um, at the top of the hat, rather than have my wet hair against my head. And so I made a couple of these in cotton and I used two strands of cotton for the chunky ones. And you can also use two strands of worsted weight if you want to, if you don't have a worsted weight yarn. But anyway, they work fantastic. And this is the pattern that I use to make them for me. And this works really great for my size head. And But you're, everyone has a different size head. And so it's real important to adjust it. And another thing, it is better for the hat to be just a smidge tight rather than too big because yarn can be stretchy when especially when you're stitching it up and so you don't want your hat to stretch all out on you you want to be able to uh wear that hat because i've had many hats that i've made fit just perfect and then after a while they stretch out and i'm so disappointed because it'd be one of my favorite hats all right so we stitched one row of just double crochet around the top of this hat just to give us a nice solid base to stitch our band in with and make sure when you get a band you get a nice sturdy band and it doesn't have any metal or and also it's covered in this nylon stretch um, it's better to this is better to use than say just a rubber band that can break on you because you don't want your hat to fall apart on you when you're wearing it but also it is it does have a rubber band inside but it has this protective coating and so it's going to last a lot longer all right, so the way we do this, I'm going to move this out of the way, is we just lay that band right inside that hole. And you think, oh, that hole is so huge, there's no way that's going to fit. But what you're going to do is you're going to put your hook through your first stitch and through that band and pull that loop through and stitch one single crochet. And we're going to do this all the way around, and you will have to scrunch your stitches in. That's the way that it works. You just scrunch them in and we'll do this all the way around. And I'll do several like this and then I'll just kind of squinch them over. Then I'll do a few more and squinch those over also. And you can see, just squinch them over a little. I don't know if squinch is a word, squish. <laughs> Anyway, push them over just so you can get your hat band in there. And the reason I like to do it this way is because it also helps bring the hat in um, for shaping. It gives you the shape that you want on the top of your hat. And um, it, I just think it makes it lay good. And I've made bunches like this. And whoops, my, my yarn split there. So I'm going to pull that and redo that stitch. There we go. All right, got to keep squinching it over. And I, you can see I've still got a ways to go. So we'll just push that yarn down and pull that, that um, band out. We'll keep going right around the circle. I've made a bunch in the worsted weight, but I'll have to tell you, I really prefer the chunky weight ones. I don't know why. Of course, they're a lot warmer on your ears, and people say, the, how are you going to keep your head warm with a hole in the top? But your ponytail or your bun is there, and so it really, you're just as warm. And I main thing for me is keeping my ears warm. All right, so I made it all the way around. And see how it all just squished up in there? Then we're going to join to that first single crochet and tie off. Weave that in. And I'm just going to use my hook. Whoops. Just so I can pull that to the inside. And I'll weave that in later. So there's the hat. Is that not the cutest thing? I just love this, these hats. I, I, I do. I wear them all the time, both this one and the messy bun style. 
and um, just sew me on a couple of buttons and it's perfect it's a great runner's hat or someone who jogs outside that wants to have their hair up but don't want but does not want to have it up inside their hat they're great for going to you you're um, running on an errand or picking your kids up from school and you've been out all day and you haven't had time to, to grab a quick bath to do your hair I mean they're just just perfect little hats to throw on and whatever buttons you choose can make it you know personal and the same thing with the yarn you can use chunky you can use worsted weight the key on the key on this style of hat is measure as you go and that's been the key for me anyway when I uh, crochet I always measure as I as I go I'm a, I'm a great measurer and I think if you rely only on stitch counts I'm just going to tie a quick knot back there so we can cut this off and show those buttons. And do take the time to weave these ends in with your with your needle. But anyway, there's a couple of buttons I stuck on there for fun. I actually want those a little farther over. There we go. But anyway, these are great hats to make. They're very versatile and this pattern super duper easy. It is a free pattern on my blog. It's just called My Chunky Messy Bun and Ponytail Hat. So go ahead and make you a bunch and wear them all over town. I love mine. <laughs>